soar through the air with the new flying system unlocked as you level. Remember those times when you had to complete Pathfinder achievements six months into an expansion to unlock flying? <sighs> well, not anymore because dragon riding is the new flying system awaited for you awaiting you, that's what I meant to say, in the Dragon Isles, and you can actually fly as soon as, I don't know, 61, 62, really, really, really early on, and it is a lot more than just simple flying, and that's what we are going to be talking about today, a guide for everything that you need to know on dragon riding, going into the new expansion, so you can race, so you can compete, so you can fly from high peaks at supersonic speed, man! But before we go into that, if you like the content that you see on our channel and you want to see more of it, and you want to support us a little bit more, of course, as well, consider checking our Patreon page with the link down in the description below. Our Patreon has a couple of tiers based on what exactly you want to contribute with, and we would be super grateful for any amount of support that you guys show us it definitely helps us a lot and we're really really humble and we couldn't do it without you and hey you might even get some goodies like wallpapers and be a part of the monthly patreon talks which we will have one soon before the holidays now uh, let's talk about dragon riding man dragon riding is the new type of aerial movement in the dragon isles and it does not replace old school flying actually it is somewhat different from it though and you could say it's more of a falling with style type of movement. The speeds you soar with when dragon riding are much higher than with our old system and 100% more fun. Thank you Blizzard for finally allowing fun in doses of course, as dragon riding has its issues as well by comparison with the normal flying system. Let's see how it's different from what we're used to and how it actually works. First of all, with flying we used to summon a mount and simply move in the direction we wanted to go press the auto run toggle button or click to move and go afk for a while. With dragon riding this is not really recommended as your dragon needs high speeds to keep going. It uses momentum to replenish its vigor in order to soar higher and faster. You cannot hover with dragon riding and you cannot really afk midair for more than a few seconds. Unfortunately you cannot use dragon riding anywhere outside of the dragon isles at the moment and old-fashioned flying is not available while inside the aisles. But really, other than the hover slash AFK option, I really won't miss flying at all. Maybe just on my druid. I keep pressing boomkin form when I land, so RIP travel form, I guess. But let's focus on the positive side. It's so amazing! The speed, the rush, the visual effects, the feeling you get when you drop down from a cliff and gain speed, and then you suddenly pull up and just soar Unbelievable! Unlike f normal flying, when dragon riding, not only does your dragon visually fly in from behind you, giving you some anxiety issues when you summon it, making you wonder, who that? But you also get some buttons to press. First, we have the surge forward, which, well, surges you forward, giving you those speeds you need. It costs one vigor and it's probably the most used dragon riding spell at the moment. Second is Skyward Ascent, propelling your dragon upwards, taking you to the heights you need to reach, the high peaks and the well-known Thaldrasis Apex. You can also double jump to activate this spell, which also costs one vigor. Whirling Surge is an amazingly fun spell where you whoosh and spin through the air, giving you the rush of speed that is dragon riding. It costs three vigor and it's great for traveling short distances really, really quickly. However, it has a 30 second cooldown. Lastly, Bronze Time Lock is our Bronze Dragon Riding spell and it deals with time, uh, obviously. It marks a point on your positional timeline, aka time locking you to that position and turns into Bronze Rewind once used. It has a 1 minute cooldown and Bronze Rewind takes you back to the position you were in when you used Bronze Time Lock, but it resets when you dismount. As you fly downwards, you will keep gaining speed and moving upwards will make you lose speed until your dragon grows tired and just hovers. So you need to find a balance where you keep your momentum up as long as possible to cover greater distances and heights and keep yourself flying for longer. Using your first three abilities will help you gain or keep your momentum up and thanks to your talents, they will also refill faster when flying at higher speeds. So you can fly endlessly and effortlessly once you get the hang of it. Your vigor also regenerates while grounded. When your dragon is soaring at high speeds, you will notice blue particles speeding next to your drake, while medium speeds only show white particles and low speeds yield no particles. 
Well, let's take a look at our brand new dragon friends. As you are progressing the campaign quests, you'll receive a dragon from each area from a different dragon flight. The red dragonfly rewards you with a renewed proto drake. The green dragonfly gives you a windborne velocity drake. The blue dragonfly offers the highland drake. And the bronze dragonfly rewards you with the cliffside wilder drake. All these drakes share the same dragon riding abilities and talents and they are also highly customizable through the use of manuscripts. Not only when it comes to small details like color, horns, eyes, snouts, tails, armor, spikes, scales, hair, etc. But also when we speak about full body transformation. What a beast! Basically, the full body transformation option is a complete rework of your dragon into something new, like the Storm Eater model from the raid, or for PvP, the Crimson Gladiator. I wonder if these will count as extra mounts for my collection. Hmm. You can either get these manuscripts as drops from world events, dungeons, raids, quest rewards and so on, or you can buy some from the vendors. Once you get a manuscript, you click to learn it and the customization option will become available in your rostrum of transformation. There is one available in each area, so you won't need to go far to make your lizard the way you want it. And even better, these customizations are account wide. You can also make your dragon soar faster and longer and increase your vigor by gathering all the dragon glyphs scattered across the dragon isles up to a maximum of 6 vigor. It takes roughly 30 minutes to 1 hour to get all 48 of them and they are account bound. Same as the drakes and the talents, so this is something you only need to do once. In order to get a glyph, you simply have to fly or fall through it and you will get it as a currency which you can use to unlock more dragon riding skills, which we roughly call talent points because they kind of look similar. The first skill costs one glyph and the following ones cost more and more, up to 5 glyphs per skill. There are 12 glyphs in each of the Dragon Isle areas and some are easier to reach and some <coughs> Eldritch's Apex, which may take you a few tries if you are still learning how to control your dragon. You can learn your new skills as soon as you get the glyphs for it and you won't need to run back to your dragon riding trainer for it. There are several guides and Wikaras out there offering routes and tips on how to get them and in which order so you have where to choose from. And if you still can't do it, just call a friend. Your dragon riding trainer can help you activate a passenger to your dragon riding mount, which will look just like a little whelp flying close to his mama. So if you have trouble getting the glyphs yourself, just ask a friend to activate his passenger, hop on and have him fly you through the glyphs. It is very important that you, the whelp, go through the glyphs as your friend passing through them will not count. Luckily, the glyphs remain visible even after going through them, so your friend will always be able to see where they are in position accordingly. We do recommend getting the add-on Handy Notes Dragon Glyphs for this, as it works wonders for planning ahead and knowing the positions of all of the glyphs you still need. Another thing you should probably know about being a passenger whelp is that your vigor will not replenish while riding someone else's dragon. It will neither deplete nor refill, so no, you cannot use it to take turns flying up unless you start out with the max vigor when you hop on. We left the most fun part for the last, Dragon Riding Races. OMG! These are so great, so fun, so everything! And they give pretty nice rewards too, from customization manuscripts to transmog, a pet and a title. <sighs> they are scattered across the aisles and you can choose between the easy mode which rewards bronze, silver or gold depending on how fast you finish your race or advanced which adds obstacles in your way to the next waypoint. Just look out for those trees and cliffs as they will probably cost you the gold achievement if you make a wrong turn at high speeds. The advanced races are unlocked once you complete chain quests starting from the Waking Shore Tour quest which will help you unlock the following part of the chain of races in all of the four areas. You will start your race with 3 vigor even if your drake can go up to 6 or if your vigor was depleted before starting the race. Just for fairness. During races, you may also notice wind gales, whooshy winds in your waypoints which will give you speed and momentum, so try to go through them if they're not too far off your path. A partly similar effect you can also find in the winds of the isles found through the areas which will help your dragon propel itself upwards, thus helping you reach new heights and gain more momentum. But they are generally not part of a race. You can also encounter three types of orbs in a race. A Vigor Orb, which will fly you upwards and help you instantly regain one Vigor. A Stun Orb, which will stun you for two seconds, thus making you lose all of your momentum. And a Slow Orb. However, your talent Onaran Gusts will help you deal with the last two types of orbs with more ease by allowing you to cross through them without getting the negative effect 
if you time it less than a second after using Surge Forward. Once you reach Renown 7 with the Valdraken Accord, you'll also unlock Aerial Challenges, which allows you to do Dragon Riding World Quests, which reward all sorts of goodies, including manuscripts so you can customize your Drake even more. For those of you with motion sickness, fear not, Blizz got your back. In the options menu, either go to the accessibility, general and motion sickness or simply type motion sickness in the search bar and fiddle with the options there to keep your character centered and to reduce camera motion. Some players also mentioned that they found dragon riding to be easier and more fun by using first person camera. And this has been one of the biggest hooks that the Dragon Flight expansion has kind of showcased for us. And we were kind of worried that it would be a grindy progression system and it doesn't feel like it's so... And it beats Torghast a million times over and over. It's good. It's good. But what do you think? What is your favorite proto dragon? It's not... They're not all proto dragons. But if you're, what is your favorite Drake? Leave it in the comment section below. And what is the best time you've gotten on a gold race? <laughs> Thank you for watching the video. Thank you, patrons, for supporting the content. And we will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. I've been loving it then, I still love it now Still, I play wild Still, I play wild Getting better every day, let me show you how Cause still, I play wild Still, I play wild It's getting harder to stay, but at the end of the day It's a guilty pleasure, so just log in and play Whether it's classical retail, I'ma do a slash bow Still, I play wild